Hello and welcome to the Business History Conference audio announcements. Hello, my name is Andrew Pop. I am Editor-in-Chief at Enterprise and Society and I'm glad to welcome you to this brief auditory tour of our latest issue, Volume 25, Number 1. Yes, we are a quarter century old this year. We hope to mark that anniversary with some short reflection pieces later in the year. Volume 25, number one, truly is a bumper issue that illustrates the breadth, depth, and richness of the scholarship that comprises business history today. At the heart of this issue is a compelling, provocative symposium anchored by Lindsay schackenbach Regale's essay entitled A Brief History of the History of Capitalism and a New American Variety. In her essay, Lindsay proposes a new variety of the history of American capitalism. Martial capitalism, with its roots in the early national and antebellum eras, and influenced by the evolution of capitalism in the United States. It is a system of political economy in which concealed military power rather than abstract market forces serves as an invisible hand and bestows economic opportunity upon some individuals. The symposium then marshals three commentaries or responses from a distinguished panel, adopting a variety of perspectives on this. A proposed new variety, and on the history of capitalism more generally. The panel comprises Brittany Farr, Katie A. Moore, and Sharon Ann Murphy. Rounding the symposium out is a short rejoinder from Lindsay. Despite carrying this substantial intervention, the volume still finds space to carry no less than eight full research articles. Enterprise and Society claims to be the International Journal of Business History, and I think the geographic coverage of the articles in this issue, this issue more than justifies that claim. First up, I want to highlight a suite of three articles on Chinese topics. The growth of Chinese business history in recent years has been one of the most exciting developments in the field for some time. Together, these three articles indicate the scope of what has already been achieved and the promise of that yet to come. The three articles are... Marketing the Multinational in Shenbao, Shanghai, 1872 to 1889, by Peter Gibson and Simon Veal. Banking on Women, the Shanghai Women's Commercial and Savings Bank, 1924 to 1955, by Jackie Wang. And Electric Pioneers, National Lobbying, Technology Transfer, and the Origins of the Chinese Electric Lamp Industry, 1921 to 1937, by Gassan Moazin. Moreover, we stay in Asia for a further fascinating piece of work, crafting a post-colonial international identity, Malaysian pewter company Royal Selangor's branding strategies, 1970 to 1992, by Yen Ni Yong. This article analyzes how business and former colonies adapt their branding strategies to transitioning ideas on national identities and economic development in the post-colonial era by drawing upon cosmopolitan worldviews of malleable identities and utilizing ties with former colonizers to gain cultural capital, both domestically and abroad. This is a highly original piece of work that personally, I am particularly pleased to publish. Adding to the impressive geographic reach of the issue is Rob Aitken's Numberless Little Risks, Tropical Exposure and Globalizing Actuarial Discourse, 1852 to 1947. The article explores how life insurance and imperial meaning making are deeply in, implicated in each other. 2021, we publish what is, in my view, a particularly brave, important and challenging essay by Marguerite Serge, entitled The Peruvian Amazon Company, Credit and Debt in the Putumayo Wild Rubber Business. In this issue, we are delighted to publish Stephen P. Walker's The Peruvian Amazon Company, An Accounting Perspective, which diligently builds on Margarita's earlier work. It is very rewarding to see this kind of dialogue developing in the pages of the journal. Last, but far from least, we have two very different essays. First, Lewis Wade takes us to early modern France to explore underwriting empire, marine insurance and female agency in the French Atlantic world. This exciting article is already garnering all kinds of attention. As an aside, please remember that we are always very open to receiving early modern and earlier work. Finally, though, of course, as an editor, I never have favorites, it does give me great personal pleasure to be able to present to you Simon Mullins' Witch Hunt in Washington, Ronald Prane, 
Robert F. Kennedy, the McClellan Committee in the Investigation of International Business in the Cold War, which forensically examines exactly what happened when in February 1956, Ronald Prane, chairman of the Rhodesian Selection Trust Group of Mining Companies, was subpoenaed and appeared before the Permanent Subcommittee on Investigation at the US Senate Committee of Government Operations. I've always been a sucker for a good microhistory, and this is certainly that. That's it for now. Of course, the second number of the year is already rapidly taking shape, and I look forward to introducing exciting contents to you very soon.